In this video, we're going to use CVP analysis to make a couple of business decisions. In the first example, Gaslight is going to manufacture a new LED desk lamp. The company believes that it can sell these lamps at $25 per unit, and the variable cost to manufacture each lamp is going to be $15. Gaslight also believes that fixed costs related to production of the specific model will be $2,000. Having conducted market research, Gaslight believes that they can sell 1,000 of these lamps if they choose not to advertise. They just put them out there. People will see them on the shelves and be like, ooh, look at that new LED desk lamp. I'm going to buy that. But the company thinks that if they choose to spend an additional $1,000 on advertising, they can increase that sales volume up to 1,200 lamps. The question is, is what's better for Gaslight's bottom line? Should the company put these lamps onto the market without advertising? sell a thousand of them or should they spend the additional thousand dollars to sell 12,000 lamps well gaslight here with all the information we have can figure out what they should do by determining what plan is going to give us the highest operating income we have all of our information starting with the fact that gaslight intends to sell these lamps for 25 dollars a piece the unit cost uh, in terms of variable cost to produce each lamp is going to be 15 bucks. Therefore, each lamp that we sell will contribute $10 towards covering our fixed costs. Our unit contribution margin is 10 bucks. And at a base level, no matter what we do, advertise or not advertise, there are $2,000 of fixed costs that Gaslight has to pay related to production of these lamps. Again, our proposed sales volumes are, is 1,000 lamps if we choose not to advertise. Or 1200 lamps if we do advertise well in this instance we can figure out what the amounts are going to be for plan a not to advertise or plan b to advertise by taking our sales volume for each of these two different decision alternatives and multiplying it by our unit amounts so if we do not advertise we sell a thousand lamps at 25 bucks a piece therefore generating twenty five thousand dollars in sales revenue we will spend $15 a piece in variable production costs for each one of those lamps which you manufacture and sell. So for a thousand lamps that'll cost $15,000 and if we generate $25,000 of sales revenue and pay $15,000 in variable manufacturing costs to produce those units, the contribution margin is going to be $10,000. We have $2,000 of fixed costs which we're stuck with no matter what. If we don't advertise, we're not going to increase those fixed costs because we're not going to pay that additional thousand for advertising. So our fixed costs are still going to be two thousand. Meaning, if we don't advertise, we put these lamps out into the market. We sell a thousand of them at our proposed selling price, at our proposed uh, cost to produce these. The level of operating income we're going to experience from the sale of these new LED desk lamps is eight thousand. But what if we do advertise? Well, then our volume goes up to 1200 and if we sell 1200 lamps at 25 bucks a piece it's gonna be thirty thousand dollars in sales revenue if we sell 1200 lamps and each one of them costs us fifteen dollars in variable manufacturing costs that means to produce all 1200 of those lamps which we're going to sell we're going to have to pay a total of eighteen thousand dollars in variable manufacturing costs leaving us with a margin of twelve thousand left to cover our fixed costs what will our fixed cost be under this uh, decision alternative? Well, we have 2000 that we're stuck with regardless. But if we choose to advertise, we have to pay an additional $1,000 for that advertising, which is fixed. It won't go up with the level of sales that we have, which means our fixed cost is going to increase from 2000 up to 3000 leaving us with operating income for this plan of 9000 So what one of these two alternatives should Gaslight choose to advertise or not to advertise? They should advertise. Why? Because advertising gives them the largest amount of operating income. Let's take another example here and say that Gaslight believes they can greatly increase their sales volume if they lower the price. If they lower the sales price of these new LED desk lamps from $25 down to $20, the company believes that they will be able to sell 1,900 of them. But all other relevant variable costs are going to stay exactly the same. So assuming that the company is going to advertise, that was the better choice we had from the first two, and thusly pay that extra thousand dollars of fixed costs, is this a good plan for Gaslight to drop their selling price down to 20 bucks from 25 bucks? Well, let's find out. 
What are our unit amounts now? Well, for sales revenue, we have two options. We can sell at 25 or we can sell at 20. Regardless what price we sell for, our unit variable cost is still going to be 15 bucks, which means if we sell at 25 and we have a unit variable cost of 15, our contribution margin will be 10. But if we sell at 20 and our unit variable cost is 15, our contribution margin drops down to 5. We are committed to paying the $3,000 in total fixed costs that we had from before because we are going to choose for both of these alternatives to advertise because it's going to help us increase our sales volume. So if we sell at $25 a piece, and again, we're advertising like we did before, our sales volume will be $1,200. But we think if we drop that price down to 20 bucks, much more likely that people are going to want to buy this lamp at the new lower, cheaper price. Our sales volume is going to increase all the way up to 1900 bucks. So what amount of revenue do we generate under both of these instances? Again, we're going to take our sales volume and multiply it by the unit amount. Our first alternative is to sell at 25 bucks. So if we do sell at 25 bucks, we'll sell 1200 of these and 1200 times 25 means we're going to generate $30,000 in sales revenue. Those 1200 units at $15 a piece to produce for variable costs means we're going to have to pay a total of $18,000 of variable manufacturing costs, leaving us with a contribution margin of $12,000 left over. And after we pay our $3,000 of fixed cost, our operating income is going to be 9,000, same numbers that we had on the prior slide. What happens if we drop this down to 20 bucks? Well, we'll sell 1,900 lamps, but we're going to sell them at 20 bucks a pop, which means we're going to generate a total of $38,000 of sales revenue. Each one of those 1,900 lamps is going to cost us 15 bucks in variable manufacturing costs to produce. That is a total of 28,500. So if we generate $38,000 of sales revenue, we have to pay $28,500 in variable manufacturing costs to produce those 1,900 desk lamps. That leaves us with a contribution margin of only $9,500. And after we pay our $3,000 in fixed costs, our operating income, if we drop our price down to 20, it's only going to be 6500 So what should we do in this instance? We should continue to sell at $25 per unit because it leaves us with the highest level of operating income. So even though dropping our price down increases our sales volume and it increases our overall sales revenue, it doesn't increase our overall sales revenue enough to offset the huge increase that we have in unit variable costs. Essentially, our unit contribution margin is just too low uh, in this instance to generate enough overall margin to cover our fixed costs and increase our profitability.